Welcome to Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. With me on this episode is Donna Kassman and Dara Collins of Modern Mahjong. Welcome to Mahjong Central's Table Talk Live, Dara and Donna. So nice to see you, meet you yeah. virtually. <laughs> I'm Donna, this is Dara. <laughs> People get us confused. I love your background. That's a beautiful yeah, that was rider. A, yeah, my parents brought back from Hong Kong many, many years ago. It's gorgeous. Is it uh, Mother of Pearl? No, I wish. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it wood inlay or something? Yes. Okay. Very, very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, I guess we can go ahead and, and start in on questions since we've got all the technical AV tests complete. So, tell us how you guys first met. We met through a bunch of um, related friends and family, and then we were at um, mommy and me classes together when our kids were little. And her son, her older son, was in a lottery school that I was hoping to get my daughter into this public lottery school. And as soon as we did, I ran up to her and mommy and me and said, she's going, <laughs> she got in. So we were friends from when they were in second grade. And I think we probably started playing Mahjong together I think three years later. Mm -hmm. yeah. we were so what, what year would that have been? Because one of my questions is how long have you been playing Mahjong? That nine years ago. Nine now? years ago, right. We knew we were all together because we edited a cookbook together for the PTA. So that yeah, we worked for a lot of <laughs> events through the schools. We did PTA. a Bible together. So. OK. Mm -hmm. So once you met, how did Mahjong come into the picture? Uh, friends in the neighborhood were learning. Um, my mother never played Mahjong. The tiles were too loud for her. <laughs> oh, no. There are new history overload, huh? <laughs> yeah. Kind of by osmosis from when I was little. My mom played all the time. It was, you know, the typical stories you hear about the kids having play dates when the moms played at different houses. Okay. It was something that much older women played. It was not thing. I didn't think I was old enough yet. And for some reason, yeah, it must have been um, 49. It must have been about nine years ago. Because I remember I turned 40 and I said, oh, well, it's the law. I guess I got to start playing Mahjong. <laughs> it's a, it's one of those um, rite of passage, I guess, right? I, I don't know what the, um, the tradition is. I learned when I was 12. So it's I started young. But um, I hear that a lot of people typically start when they retire. So yeah. I guess you're on the early side, too. Well, we are because um, we are both attorneys. Um, I was a partner in a law firm and I had my, my father passed away. I had a second child and my mother had open heart surgery all within a month. So I had to give up practice to take care of my mother. And then I had the time to play with my friends and learn how to play Mahjong. Okay. And also we noticed, and we'll get to it later, but we noticed through Mahjong community, a lot of the central themes of the game is that it's almost like a form of therapy and a form of society and community. That's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. So as much as Donna had so much responsibility on her, being able to try to kind of be like in yoga or horseback riding or some other activity where you have to disconnect mm -hmm. for her to yeah, we hear that story a lot through our community and just meeting people where they're the caregiver, whether it's a mother, father, or young children. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the middle of the sandwich. So for me, I was yeah. in and out of the hospital for many years, and that was my Tuesday. I knew I could see my friends and play. So it was a very nice thing. Yeah. I have heard that for many people, including me, Mahjong is more than just a game. And it's different things for different people. So it's wonderful to hear your story. And I just want to take a few are becoming empty nesters in their 50s, and they're now learning to play earlier than before, like you said. It would be interesting to get some demographics on that. So we, we talked about 
how you met and then how you uh, became aware of Mahjong and learned. So you've been playing for about nine years. So I want to know how Dice came into the relationship. Well, that's a good segue. Um, my mother passed away three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking of friendships, my Mahjong girls were there for me. I mean, they really worked through everything. Yeah. And so I bought, my mother had left me some money and said, buy something for yourself. And I bought my first bone and bamboo vintage set. Oh, and nice. in the set, a dice coffin, <laughs> which this is what it's called. The yep. teeny little <laughs> <lip -less. laughs> And did not resonate well with me uh, since what I'd just been through. Donna was so proud to show the set and she loved it, but I could tell she was like reserved about it. Uh huh. She showed me that and told me the name. I was like, well, that's an easy fix. I'm going to go buy her beautiful dice. Okay. We started talking about it and we were like, there aren't any companies that you know make these beautiful dice. So necessity is the mother of invention. We just started designing um, our original. We have ones with like, I mean, you have pictures. You, you, have, you can use them in your solitaire videos, but we have ones with a golden joker. Mm -hmm. We just started expanding. And the interesting thing is, as the rules provide for pretty much every form, is that you use dice to begin the game yes the little catchphrases we use begin with a beautiful role and i think subconsciously we kind of both thought that this would merge into more things so it kind of wasn't just for the dice but just for the whole company itself that we were beginning with a beautiful role and expanding to other things you know and as greg swain will say in the name of her book the tiles are really work of art you know every tile every set is different mm -hmm. and they're just beautiful we wanted to match the beauty of the tiles with the dice, we started off with ivory because we were both collecting vintage sets. And then we started getting into Bakelite sets. And then people said, I have a red set, I want a blue. And it just kept evolving from there. And then there's Barney's orange set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the panda set, the we, set that has the bamboo on it. We expanded to panda with bamboo. Uh -huh and we had peacocks. peacocks so far we're on our second series of peacocks so it's just something so fun and it's also such a great gift mm -hmm. it is yeah. it's, there it's, are you know there's very limited things i mean in the mahjong world there's not that many things that you can get as a gift that's also an accessory for the game so it's one of the and the four words we hate to hear is we don't use dice in oh, yeah. we got people say we don't use them why would we use them we say you're breaking the rules. If you look on the back of the, you know, National Mahjong League card, it says roll the dice, you know, to break the wall. And it drives and Tom, crazy. Tom Sloper has a great explanation for it in Sloperama. And he was teaching women and they said, well, you don't need to, no one could, no one could hide jokers, no one could hide tiles. But she did. <laughs> I did a dummy wall and I rolled myself a heavenly hand. And I set up, and obviously that's an exaggeration and people get very offended by it that don't use dice. But um, you could stack the, the set, you know, in your favor and have jokers. And then other people say that the way around it is, well, we always use a seven, so no one knows where anything is. But if you well, open, it defeats the purpose. Right, and people were very offended by that video. Well, I wouldn't play with people that did that. We're like, you should, you'd be surprised in tournaments that happens. Yeah, and it's not a, a question of, um, well, we don't play for money, because unfortunately, I don't think the 35 cents is, the driving factor and you know that <laughs> but yes yeah. yeah. just a segue and they're still our main part of our business but we actually segued from originally we were mahjong dice and then when we came out with other products now we're modern mahjong all right so we've talked about the dice i would love to hear how you came to Maginos, <laughs> new product that i'm very excited about because I happen to have one that's waiting for an unboxing. So share with us, if you will, about Majinos. Well, we found a lot of people are intimidated by the symbols on Majan sets, um, including my husband, your <laughs> husband. Um, so we wanted to come out with a game where you can learn the symbols um, easily and a game where you also could play with your grandchildren or your kids. A lot of people ask us like, what's a good age to start teaching my kids or my grandkids? And there really is no right age. I mean, you learned at 12. Um, 
our younger daughter picked it up by literally just sitting in my lap and watching us play. And it just depends. But once you play and have fun, because it stands alone on its own as a domino game, but it kind of just subliminally, you're picking up, bam, flower, dot. So those things aren't intimidating when you then want to learn how to play Mahjong. <laughs> that's amazing so basically it's like a it's like the ground level the introduction to mahjong through mahjongos yeah i mean you know we talked to several people we're hoping it's true that people are getting back to playing board games if you see there's board game cafes popping up around people want to play with people not on their phones or their computer and we just thought this was a great game to sit down with your kids and your grandkids and your grandparents or parents and, and have fun. Very clever. How many Maginots are there in a bag? There's 28 and we purposely made one tile that is double jokers because just in case people don't play with the jokers, we didn't want them to not be able to play the whole game. So if you just take that one out, then there's 27 tiles and you could play it you know, if you're planning and learning other styles of games. Is, is 20, 27 a standard number of? 28 is the standard number for, it's called double six dominoes. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely have to make a note of that because I'm going to do a solitaire version of, mm -hmm. of Marginos in oh, my there. video. Yeah, That's we have awesome. directions in the bag and online we did a score sheet and you could make it more fun and add different you know, ways to score. Right. The basic, like the instructions that come in the bag are a basic, more of a domino matching game. And oh. then for people to extend it and make it a longer game, we have on our website a link that you could print out a whole score sheet. And it has the images of all the different images on the tiles. Okay. Excellent. Very good. That is really, really clever. So I was on your website recently and I noticed that you have some actual mahjong sets that are what you're calling replica and robe sets and i would love to hear about those so we introduced them um just a very limited amount of them and the reception was incredible so we are hoping to have them we don't have a date yet but we actually started a wait list for them because people who had missed out on them so um it's funny because before we started collecting, there were so many terms that I didn't know. Um, so for those pe people watching or seeing this later, um, a replica set is one where the front and the back of the tile is the same color, but all the sides are a, a different color, contrasting color. So they're very valuable. If you look on eBay, some of them go for- 3,000, 3,500 for a vintage and robe set. And they're so they're they're stunning. So we're doing a replica version of it to make it more affordable now. Well, on that point, we find it very interesting. We talk to people who may have a burgundy and robe set vintage. They're afraid to play with it. Um, they're afraid to play yeah. with their friends. They don't want their friends eating and touching the tiles. Or so they the feel tiles. better having this type of set to play with. So we hope to have it. If anybody's interested, I feel like I'm doing like we have a, a wait list. We have a wait list. They can email Modern Mahjong with one G at gmail.com. Um, we're not taking payment yet. We're just taking names and we'll contact you when they come out. But we're just making a limited run of them. And it's just a very fun way to have the feel of a vintage set, replica set, but modern. Not be and afraid very to play with them, right? We can get rough and rugged with them. <laughs> So uh, I also would like to know what colors are available in the enrobed sets. I thought I saw a couple different options. Right now, we're only going to do the black because that is what most people wanted. Um, the burgundy does not come out as burgundy. It doesn't look real. Um, so we're being very particular. Um, okay. So the black right now is going to be the best. We've redesigned some of the tiles. Um, we're going to have some surprise tiles if we can, but right now it's going to be the black. These are actually the best. Take a lot of pride in the quality of our products. Okay. You know, the dice feel really good in your hand. The Maginots like feel really good. So you want it, you know, you want a nice. And we're selling it with a box and with a pair of dice, Majin dice. So it's I'm sure your customers will appreciate that. I like quality. It's important to me. Yeah, because a lot of people have racks. You don't need more racks, you know, but, um, you definitely need pretty dice to go with it. But 
Yeah, so right now the black is going to come out. And we okay. have that's so crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a question. Uh, someone, actually, someone, it isn't a question. It's actually a testimonial. They say their replica and robes in robe sense are sensational. Played with one today. So are they just are they out or are they thinking maybe they actually played with a real set? Do you actually have sets out? Yeah, we sold, we sold a few. Really? Okay. Yeah. So maybe they're one of the few who have them. Yeah. Oh, and that's exciting. When we sold out within yeah, no, we got two people days, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. The, so I will have links to everything we talk about after the episode. That'll include their website where you can purchase dice, the Maginos, and the Enrobe sets. So, and we also have, <laughs> so we came out with Pet Collection. Oh, yes. <laughs> because if you go on Facebook, Instagram, like we do, you'll see everybody's dog or cat at the Mahjong table. And we also have the Mahjong table. Yeah, you know, <laughs> playing Mahjong, playing with the tiles. Um, there are so many people that are animal lovers. So we came out with a big barker, squeaky Mahjong tile. And then on the back, it says, keep, keep your paws off my tiles. And then we think we're very funny. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Meow John catnip <laughs> toy and it's always a perfect time for meow john i don't think we can see it in there mm -hmm. we could send you so, so if, sorry so that has does that have catnip in it yes oh yes <laughs> oh, i should get that for my little doggy because he loves cat toys he goes for them all dogs love the catnip toy that's yeah that's really really funny so let's see we we had somebody ask about events and i hope to get to that shortly what i would like to know though before we get into that is if people are interested in mahjong dice maginos and the enrobed re the replica enrobed tiles where can they order so our website is modern mahjong m-o-d-e-r-n mahjong m-a-h-j-o-n-g we only one g dot com and our website, um, we have all the dice in different listings. We have the Maginos, we have the score sheets. And um, right now they can see pictures of a similar enrobe set, but if they're interested in being on the wait list, they can email us. And it's the okay. same website, but it's modern Majan, and then it's at gmail.com. And if you go to Majandice1g.com, you'll also be directed to our main website. Yeah. So that kind of leads me to my question about Mahjong community. And this goes into Facebook. Now, some of you in the audience may or may not use social media, but social media is a big part of many people's lives, especially Mahjong players, because a lot of us belong to several Facebook groups all about Mahjong, including Mahjong community. So please tell me, how did that come to be? That has been one of the best parts of this, I must say. Especially they'll come to South Florida for a few months a year and they're like, can I play with you or where can I play? So I think that's kind of where it started. It was that, and it also, well, we have a Facebook page for our business and we noticed that, as you can tell, we have a lot to say. So it kind of, like we started with, um, I think it was the video on how people could cheat without rolling the dice. Um, I don't remember if the, we did a, um, one video on um, uh, Modern Family. And there were, it's, it, it's a really great one. If you go to our YouTube channel, you could see um, we did things about celebrities playing. And it just seemed that it would be better fit for a group than a page because it just kind of blurred the lines. And allow people to ask questions in a safe, you know, fun environment. So people ask, you know, questions all the time about certain rules or playing or where can I play or where's a tournament? Where can I find a teacher? So we offer that service through the community and it's been really great. And at first we had the directories on Facebook. So if a teacher wanted to add, they could just go in and edit. Unfortunately, Facebook's wonderful for certain layouts, but for accessing files, it's a little bit not intuitive. So instead, if anybody wants to be on our places to play, which we call Where Is My Mahjong Community, 
our teacher directory or our events and tournaments directory, if they email us at that same modernmajan at gmail.com and we take it and we add it to those directories. And it's just a really, I mean, it's a sense of community. It helps, um, like Donna was saying, you know, people on vacation or moving that we set people up before they even move to a new neighborhood. They were looking for places to play. And before they even moved, they had twice a two a week game set up for when they moved. So it's just very nice to know that people are looking out for each other or um, just on vacation. Somebody just today is going to be in our neck of the woods mm -hmm. and we gave them like six different places that they could play. Yeah. One recent post, um, Donna took a picture of a lot of different one bands. Um, I oh, them. I saw that one. Yeah. And there was like, how many sets do you have? I took a picture and as I'm taking it, I'm like, uh, where did that set come from? And when did you get that one? Oh, that's a pretty hawk. I didn't know you had the hawk. <laughs> So it's just very interesting because a lot of new players get confused about why BAM is a bird. So mm -hmm. them, whenever you go to a tournament or play at someone else's house, the first thing before you set up the wall, ask to see the flowers, ask to see the bird, ask to see, you know, the soaps, the dragons. I mean, we were surprised. We were at, um, it wasn't a big tournament. It was like a mini fundraiser tournament. And there were plenty of people there that had never seen dragons that weren't a dragon, that were just the symbols. Oh, yeah, that kind of throws people. <laughs> right, I'm really confused. So it's a great thing to, you know, so we had the first post of it the other day were the bands, and tomorrow's, oh, tomorrow's going to be soaps. All soaps. the different soaps you can find in the different sets. Okay, excellent. Well, I've seen a lot of really interesting posts on your site. I love it. And anytime someone comes to my Facebook group and they say, looking for players and blah, 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 I say, consider posting this on Mahjong Community. Yeah, I know you've, awesome. been, you've been responsible for connecting people to local groups, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of keeping it up to date. It's a lot of making sure the information is accurate, and but it's very, very rewarding. It's very interesting. I mean, one of the ones we did recently, I think we gave a lot of spouses, um, if the wife plays or if the husband plays. I think the other one got very nervous when they saw recent what we did, which we focused on a player from Colorado that has the most incredible collection of over 300 sets. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. I saw but that one. <laughs> his room and his display cases are just so, so many people wrote underneath like, oh, I just showed this to my husband or I just showed this to my wife. This is what I want to build. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <Wow. I just> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just been very interesting just seeing how Majan impacts so many people and what brings them to the game. And that's part of why. So we do a series called um, hashtag why I Maj, M A H J, and hashtag mm -hmm. Maj, and then another um, fun Maj on Fine Fridays. And that's what we did on Sarah Jessica Parker, mm -hmm. on um, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, on Julia Roberts. And just, it's so interesting to hear, you know, Julia Roberts uses an expression a lot um, creating order out of chaos, and mm -hmm. then we the tiles. And um, she was away and she said, you know, I'm thrilled to be here, but I'm really upset that I'm missing my Tuesday game. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just funny to hear, you know, celebrities are just like us. It's funny to hear them talk about it like it's a very grounding thing. Can we tell them? It is. Can so, <laughs> I tell you a funny story? <laughs> I think that's true, especially when you play with the same people week after week or session after session, depending on how often you meet, but you become very close friends and fast friends, I have found, when it comes to Mahjong. But what's amazing is... Wherever we go, a restaurant, a store, anywhere we go, somebody plays Mahjong. And so the marvelous Mrs. Maisel was coming to film at the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami Beach, which is where I grew up. There and I decided to go. Um, well, we made my husband be an extra in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw photos. Did you post photos of this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you look really hard for about an eight yeah, second. Yeah. You see him in the background. He did it for us. So we um, filming was very slow, and we went to have lunch. And I'm with my back, and Dara goes, "Don, well, I think that's the director." I showed her a picture. I'm like, "Isn't that the director?" And it was with her husband. She was having lunch, so we had the waitress come over. We put a pair of our black and pink dice that we no longer have. They sold out. 
but those are the colors of Miss Maisel. So we had the waitress bring them over to her, and we, all of a sudden we hear, oh my, my goodness, Mahjong. Mahjong. I remember Mahjong. My grandmother played Mahjong, and her and her husband came over, and very, very, very it sweet. was just a lot of fun. I mean, you know. And, and we knew that she knew of it because in the second season, yeah, no spoilers, but in the second season, they were, the um, they were in the Catskills, and they were playing, the mother in law was playing. Mm -hmm. So we actually did a fun match on Friday about that. And one thing that's so interesting is you would never think that playing Mahjong and then starting a business that the things we've learned because of it, I mm -hmm. never knew how to do an iMovie more than like they do <laughs> captions and like three pictures. And now we're doing transitions and we're adding. Wow. And so it's been a learning curve for a lot of different things just to have the community running. And we met, um, he was an old, he was a rapper in his day. Now oh, he's yeah. a music producer in Los Angeles. And he did a video with a rapper his grandmother and two of her friends playing Mahjong. And it's a music video. And yeah, well, we, we, when we shared it, we muted it because it was not, not suitable for work. Was that NS <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he said, filming that video, he was so thrilled that he got it on tape because it's really a cute juxtaposition of his mother and she's wearing a vintage Bakelite bracelet or one of them are and they're slamming the tiles down and they're, oh, no. and they're smoke. And he said it was such a fun day on the set and his grandmother had passed since, so he had such a great oh. memory for on camera from that. Wow. So even though he doesn't play, he he actually bought one of our pairs, we um, custom, he bought them to roll them in the credits of something with his name. He just thought Oh, that nice. Wow, that's really cool. Well, you've done such a fabulous job, and your products are unique. They're wonderful novelty items. I proudly bring mine when I play Mahjong. I love the Joker symbol and I use them in my videos, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I've enjoyed them very much and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on Mahjongs. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what is the uh, your activities as far as events? You do participate in some activities, local activities, I assume. I, I've heard that you're participating in the longest day that with the Alzheimer's fundraising. So tell us a little bit about that and maybe other events that you're part of. So we're very honored to be on the committee. It's the National Committee for Mahjong for Memories, the longest day. Um, last year, we tried to get the game together. Um, we were unable to because the longest day is June 21st. It's the longest day of the year. It's the summer solstice. And most people in Florida, South Florida, leave um, for the summer because it gets very hot down here. So most people that play Masha. Right. <laughs> so this year we are excited because we have an event happening on May 3rd right. in Fort Lauderdale at the Fort Lauderdale Bridge Club. And it couldn't be a better venue. I mean, it's, it's perfect for it, yeah. It's set up for bridge, but it's four top tables, and we're going to start putting out, but we're very excited. Yeah, we just we just finalized it. We just put the RSVPs on the website today. And we're and actually going to do, we call it the power of play. Power of play. We're not going to do a tournament style because we find a lot of people want to come but are intimidated by tournaments where they don't play long enough. Or some people are just intimidating. Even though Majan is community and connecting, some people want to play with their group. Right. So we're going to have the option of singles coming, individuals coming and paying to donate, or if they RSVP with a table of four, table of eight, they can set it up that way as well. Um, and the other way we've supported Alzheimer's um, is we created dice. It was called Bling and Shine. It was white dice with purple and it has a little bling, like a little crystal. And we donate a dollar from the sale of every pair of dice. So this year we came out with another... Uh, the power of purple, we call it dice. And we really made it a price point that's lower so people can buy it for tournaments and raffle prizes and we were giving bulk discounts. Yeah, last year, everybody kept asking us when they were planning their Alzheimer's events, for those, for just backtracking, for people who don't know what Mahjong for Memories is, during the longest day, people could pick any activity they want to do to raise money. So there's a woman who, she was really upset she couldn't be here tonight, but hello, Janelle, Janelle. when you're watching this. <laughs> Um, she is out of Oklahoma and she's on the committee with us and she is instrumental in help pushing it along. And it doesn't even have to be a huge event like our tur well, not tournament, the day of play. People could do a Mahjong for Memories in their weekly games and just the Alzheimer's Association has little purple boxes that they could donate. 
So when people were looking, um, I know in um, Seattle, we got messages from people. They wanted to be able to give these out to people that came. So that's why, as Donna was explaining, we went to a lower price point than the Bling and Shine. And we are even offering um, discounts on pairs of four or more. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way that we can give back. People know they're getting something that represents the purple is a combination of blue and red. And Alzheimer's Association gives a great explanation of the calmness and the power mixing together. And that's where they got the color. So it's just a wonderful way to support the longest day. I think it's fabulous. I am booked to go to California in that the, on that time frame. So if I weren't, I would totally be there for that. So the next time you have an event, yeah, but, I but, hope I could yeah. I could make it because I would love to meet you, ladies. Yeah. So I will make sure to have this information in the video description below for any local players who are interested in helping them support Alzheimer's. However, we can still support you through it with your effort in another way. Can you tell us about that? It, isn't there some way that we can maybe our, donate through your Facebook page or something like that? Is there a way to join your team? Right. I think that's what it, what it is. Join your team. Join our team and we have the link um, below your group and it's a great way to virtually be there. So okay. the way to join our team is there's a code fight. And if you enter the code, there's no registration fee. And then you could either download the app and it's an easy way of donating directly to the team, or you could um, just collect your money for, let's say, instead of the winnings at the end of your game, everybody could put the winnings into a pot and then those could be sent into Alzheimer's. Okay. So I, I remember seeing this on another mm -hmm. Facebook group, but yeah. I'm a little confused about it. So, cause like, it seems like it's, it, it runs all year long. Does it run all year long or is it only for this particular time? They have a, a time where they kind of cut off. So they know what, what donations came from this campaign. So I think it's through August is when they kind yeah. of cut off the donations, but, um, but then it just seems like all of a sudden then they're planning next year's. So, but the main month of it is June. June. So we're kicking it off in May because we want to catch people before they go on vacation. All right. Well, we will definitely have information in the video description below for that. If you're interested in participating live or joining their team to help them with their effort in supporting this particular fundraiser, I think it's a wonderful cause. It's a, it's a beautiful cause. So tell us how we can best get a hold of you. I know you have lots of several different Facebook groups and your, your website, but what is the best way to get a hold of you if anyone wants to either work with you in, in some capacity or order products or maybe even find a community or sign up as a teacher? Let us know how, how what is the best way to contact you? The way is our email address, uh, modernmajan at gmail.com. But also, I mean, we laugh that we don't sleep, like we take turns. Um, uh, Messages on Facebook, I mean, we're very responsive. Comments, messages, um, we're on Instagram as well. So really though, the best way is if you have a question, our phone number is also on our website, but just by Gmail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ourselves on being very responsive. It was very sweet. I was quickly reading the comment. I wish I knew who to thank, but somebody said that they bought product from us and the customer, long story, but the customer service is beyond excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, well, that's a great testimonial. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about maybe? Yeah, your, your yeah I want to go back and say this was the first year we pre-ordered the National oh, yeah. Mahjong League card, the new, the 2020 card. It's not out yet, people. Relax. Yes. <laughs> um, March. But we pre we took pre-orders, and the National Mahjong League will donate between $1.50, $2 a card, depending on how many uh, cards are sold. And they donate that to a charity of your choice, and we pick the Alzheimer's Association. Okay, excellent. Well, that that's great. And so you have this information on. Yeah. on well, the orders are done though for the year. Is that right? You've already submitted that. For yeah. Yeah. We submitted an order for seven hundred forty-three cards. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness, that's fabulous. All right. So next year, you'd like to support that. That. Yeah. Um, so in April, we are going to be at an event in Parkland, Florida. Mm -hmm. 
and um, that's another Alzheimer's. They're doing theirs early as well. So that um, I don't think, I don't know if we have the flyer yet on our thing, but we're going to add that if anybody's interested in Parkland, we'll be out there as a vendor. Um, then we have our event in May, but we're going to be in California. We are having our first, well, we've had other pop-up shops, but this is literally, we are flying across the country in California and we are doing a pop-up shop. If anybody's in the LA area and we know that, um, Several people that we've met through this community are going to be there, and several customers are going to be there. And when is this? It's um, March 22nd. Second. It's at, a Sunday. At the Boulevard Kitchen in Sherman Oaks. And it was actually arranged by customers of ours, which is very cool. So they do this. It's so cool. It's every, I think it's every month. Once a month. The woman who owns, it's not a restaurant, it's a commercial kitchen. So the woman who owns it has a lunch and day of play, and you just registered in advance and looked beautiful. And I remember commenting, oh, I wish they had something like this near us. And we're going out to California and they scheduled it around when we were gonna be there, so. Oh, nice, how exciting. And do you have a place on your website where you have events posted so that we can see where you are and maybe if we're in the area, we right. can stop by and see you. So we have, it's, I mean, we notated it will be there as well, but we have events from what are we in now? Now we're in March. March. From March on all the way, I think, till 2021. So we list um, not just where we'll be, but where any we're playing, but any any events. But yeah. so far, I mean, we had um, Greg Swain came out and spoke in Mariposa in Boca at two events and in Aventura um, that we organized. And we just, you know, if anybody has any ideas of where they think we should go next, we, mm -hmm. <laughs> we would love to. Um, we were in Miami Beach, we did an event. Um, uh, Boca. So yeah, so it's been a lot of fun and it's really interesting because we'll hear people say, oh, you're the Mahjong Dice ladies or you're the Mahjong ladies. So mm -hmm. it's very fun. Well, I hope that our paths will cross. I would love to meet you guys. Really, I would love to. Someone asked, where in Parkland? Where in Parkland? Um, um, I could look it up. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the fun about being at tournaments or shops, pop-up shops, is the people that we meet. Um, <coughs> meet so many people that say, oh, I have my grandmother's set, yeah. or I wish I had my mother's set, my sister stole it, or, you know, <laughs> um, we hear a lot of stories. My, my sisters have my mother's set. <laughs> right. There's a lot of fights that go on. Um, they keep, they keep that, or they, you know, and um, I just love hearing the stories about people and their memories of growing up with Mahjong or playing. And, you know, it's sad because a lot of people will say to us, I wish my mother was still alive to play with my dad. So we always encourage yeah. people. Whenever I see people, I'm like, play with your mother, you know, play, like in Or they'll ask us to buy their set and we're like, no, 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 you need to learn right, how to play. It, right. Oh, it. yeah, absolutely. A lot of give that away and enjoy it. And it brings back a lot of memories for them, too. So. I think nostalgia is one of the things that makes Mahjong so special. The nostalgia. One of the fun stories we heard was the game would switch from house to house, and the kids would come home on the school bus, and the school bus driver would drop them off at whatever house the women were playing. So they have this memory of all the kids going to the house where the game was playing and eating snacks. And, you know, it's just really, that's a lot of fun. And that's uh, speaking of YouTube, um, for people that aren't on social media, because I know we mentioned our Facebook and Instagram a lot, our YouTube account, you don't need to have a Facebook or Instagram. And a lot of times, as long as the people we do stories on, or as long as it's the public information, we share it onto YouTube. So they can view a lot of those there. And I did get the answer. The Parkland event is Sunday, April 19th at the Four Seasons of Parkland. So if the flyer's not on our page yet, it'll be soon, and um, we'll create an event or share the flyer so people could contact um, Amy to register. And we met this woman, Amy, through our business. Um, it's, it's really incredible. We've helped her try and develop a, you know, a tournament or Alzheimer's event. So it's a very giving community. Yeah. And, you know. oh, wonderful. Well, I just want to thank you ladies so much for the effort that you've put into the Mahjong community overall. I mean, your your Facebook group is called Mahjong Community. That's your Facebook group, but it literally serves the Mahjong community in so many wonderful ways. You have joined people with groups of local players. You've connected 
players who want to learn how to play. And to me, that is just amazing. It's a, a beautiful service that you offer. And I just want to say thank you for that. No, th thanks to you. I mean, we, we notice a lot of people um, go back to Alzheimer's. Um, one of the things is the reason we chose Alzheimer's as our fundraiser is because the benefits of game playing and especially of group yeah. game playing. And one of the factors is loneliness. And a lot oh, of people yeah. So to thank you back, the fact that you are online and that you connect people that wouldn't have an opportunity to play otherwise, mm -hmm. incredible. I mean, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Every time we mention you and refer you, <laughs> They're like, I love Michelle. Aww. Well, that warms my heart. And I, I know there are several of my subscribers who are actually housebound. And, you know, their stories are near and dear to my heart. And being able to go live, go online, provide videos on how to play and better your skills, and even play at Mahjong time, all those can be done virtually. And for those who are in areas where they're not near actual communities who play live, it's a wonderful way for them to be able to participate in the game of Mahjong that we all love so much. So I just thank you so much for joining people live. And then, of course, we all try to join people socially online through Facebook and also, also Mahjong time which I, I am a, an affiliate there. I love playing there. And that's another way that you can play virtually. So both virtually playing live, it's all wonderful. Yeah, I mean, so, I have to say, when we started playing maybe nine, 10 years ago, there was no way to play online. And we sat around saying, we should develop an app where people <laughs> can play. And the Mahjong League, yeah, you couldn't play on the iPad. It was only right. the computer, you couldn't play on the iPad. Yeah. So we tried. So it's really come a long way in the last and nine, ten years. Yeah. And our, our two first interviews, which actually were on Mahjong Dice's business page before we had community, were the um, developer of the um, Mahjong.net yep, and yeah. of um, the 2018 practice, practice game, practice. which now is almost 20. And what's amazing is he was saying, because we thought there'd be such a lag in when the new card comes out, and I think he said it's like eight hours. Like he just puts in the new, you know, new hands and is able to shoot out the next app. So it's just amazing how much has changed and just the resurgence of Mahjong has been incredible. We were actually just interviewed by a local paper and we've been going back and forth. Um, a local news station wants to talk to us too. It's just amazing how many people are, are rediscovering the fact that uh, we touched on this earlier, but that people want to disconnect. And actually, I think it's the sixth and the seventh yeah. is the National Day of Unplugging. And people say what they're going to do to put their phone down. And a lot of people say, I unplug to play Mahjong. So it's just a very interesting way to just reinforce the connection in the community. Absolutely. It is. It, as a matter of fact, it's funny that you mentioned that because my husband who just walked in the door, incidentally. <laughs> he thinks that Mahjong is what keeps me sane because I work from home. I, oh. I basic, The only time I go out of the house is either to go grocery shopping, go to the doctor, or play Mahjong. You know what I say, would you go to a girlfriend's house and, and sit for three hours and just drink coffee and, just drink coffee and talk, but you'd go to spend three hours you know, and through our group, it's where should I take my child to the doctor? What's the best summer <laughs> program? I need a roofer. I need, you know, the amount of <laughs> after that, like, where are we in the past? Like, did we already do a cross? Because you get all, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think too when people collect collectors, like it, we've seen your mahjong birds, your one bams. When people come to play mahjong, and we see all the different sets that we have. That would be fascinating, I think. I'm, I'm a bit isolated, so I don't get to see sets. I missed a, one of our recent meetups with a group that I play with. She brought the Chris Lloyd set. Oh, wow. You know, the not the one that was the most recent or the one in production, but the previous one. And I missed it. Uh -huh. I didn't get to play with it. I would love to see that. I'd actually like to buy that set. 
It's like a thousand dollars though. But I think that is just amazing. The dice, the Maginos, the the replica and robe set, and not only that, but even your how you mentioned the bamboo and and bone set, and that we're able to play with those sets in some cases when you find jokers for American mahjong anyway. So it's just a wonderful thing that we all share those items as well as the game itself and yeah. the friendships that we develop. I, we always say, don't ask a woman how old she is or how many miles she has. So if you yeah. have three sets, then you don't need to answer. You just say, I have a collection. <laughs> well, that makes it easy. I have a collection. Right. I don't have way more than three. Right. I think I have probably more than 20. <laughs> All right, so I just want to check real quick to see if we've missed anything in chat. In the meantime, ladies, if there's anything that you want to add as far as ways that we can communicate with you, I know that you have a, is it Instagram? You do have an Instagram page that you yeah, can post to? Have Instagram because it's a very visual um, way to communicate and our products are so visually appealing. Yes, yeah. Um, you're limited in what you can say, but it's really the picture or the video, and we just have a lot of fun. I mean, if you've noticed on our page and some other pages, when people play now, they set the table oh, yeah. with an embroidered tablecloth and the red racks to go with the, the red tiles, space. and it's a whole become a whole. They celebrate holidays, and it's it's just been a lot of fun. So on Instagram, we try to do a lot of that. So people set up for a theme. I've yeah. seen a lot of. I've seen a lot of photos of, I think it's, um, is it Barney who does those um, table Barry, settings? Barry, Barry, Barry. Barry. They're always very yeah. interesting. Yes. <laughs> and it's fun. It becomes more than just a it game. It is. It's an event and a Valentine's St. Patrick's Day is coming up and let's do, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah. yeah, we have a lot of fun with Instagram. I mean, they're in a little bit of lunch somewhere. <laughs> well, we went to the new guitar hotel um, near us. The hard yeah. rock, and we just take play, pictures. And play, 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 play uh, Siamese outside and get beautiful oh. pictures. And it's just, it adds an element of the game when you just see how, I mean, it's just a very photogenic game. Right. It is. Instagram, hashtag Mahjong or Mahjong with two Gs, you can come up with everyone else who's also hashtagging that term. So you come, we've met incredible people who are seeing what they've done um, in every country in the world. Um, that's a lot of fun. One thing Dara and I did, which was fun, we took the Brightline train from Fort Lauderdale to West Palm Beach, and we played Mahjong on the train. Um, oh, really? We did Mahjong. We did Mahjong yeah. on the train. Got off. Had you, played what? you played what? We played with, it was three of us. It was the two of us and our friend Jen, and we played, and it actually worked out great because it's kind of like tables this way, but we were able to somehow make it work. Did and people stop by and say something? Well, it's funny. That day, a few people, it was a very quiet morning on the train, but we noticed that a lot of people will come over and ask us if we're playing dominoes, which is funny. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> but people get very interested in looking at the tiles, and 99% of the time, they have a story of someone they knew that played. Like, it's just so interesting. And I, I remember hearing one story of somebody that posted in our group. Her and her mom and their friends play, I think it's once a week at a restaurant, and they get stopped so often that they have a standard thing what they do that if it's the person's turn when they were talking and somebody came over is they put their discard like this so they know that it's their turn because otherwise they would get lost so many times while they were interrupted so often. I wonder if we're in a resurgence, do you think? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Are we in a resurgence? Do you think that uh, we're... I mean, uh, Linda um, Fisher had on her blog that the Mahjong League said that they sold, I think they had over 375,000 customers and sold over 500,000 cards, but I don't know if they gave like a definite. I mean, over 500,000 could be 6 million. You know, like, <laughs> so, um, I think the difference between it is a lot of people order for their groups. Yeah. So teachers can order, you know, to, we met at one of our events, we met Shirley from Canada and she orders a thousand National Mahjong League cards for her city and Canada, yeah. her province in Canada. Mm -hmm. Oh so, my goodness. You know, we've sold, oh, we didn't even say that, just our dice alone, we've sold to 40 continental U.S. states. And this was, I mean, I know it's almost, now it's almost a year, but we were saying this in like 
Yeah. I think by September, we had already sold to 46 Hawaii, um, Canada, Canada, Singapore, India. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> That's that fantastic. And in um, Kuwait. Yep. Um, so it really is the power of social media because just a website alone, we would have never been able to connect with so many people. That's wonderful. Wow. Well, I, I'm excited to see where things go with Modern Mahjong and the efforts that you're putting in, both with events and your products. I can't wait to see where it goes, and I'm, I'm happy to be a member of your community. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. Hopefully we'll have both Dara and Donna back with us again soon. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Table Talk Live, a Mahjong centric variety show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are in the market for purchasing any kind of a gift, think about modern Mahjong because they've got dice, they have the Mahjongs, and the replica enrobed sets. Those would all make amazing gifts. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next episode of Table Talk Live, may all your picks be keepers. Mm -hmm.